Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1994. So in this video I will show you how I ported over OpenTTD to the Digital Alpha running Windows NT. I was actually going to update some other ports of Quake 2 and uh, Action Quake 2, but my hard drive decided to crash real hard. Uh, SCSI drive and uh, the backup uh, similar SCSI drive was also broken in the same way, so they showed the SCSI bus error and no, no storage available. So I had to get on third drive and uh, reinstall everything. So that's how I ended up uh, trying to port op over OpenTTD when I had uh, fiddled around a little bit with uh, Quake 2 source code and didn't get anywhere where I wanted. So here I'm uh, unpacking basically 030 of the OpenTTD source code. We're gonna end up using 020 because uh, that's what I used uh, before making this video. Uh, 030 really didn't offer much of any benefits, uh, but it was just a more pain, pain in the rear. So here I'm actually loaded up the project and I'm gonna change some things around here. Uh, just showing here, the CPU is actually showing like an 8486 because this is intended for well, Windows, but running an x86 CPU. So what I'm doing right here right now is create new profiles. And when I do that, they will be uh, generated for alpha instead. So I can actually pick alpha CPUs and also removing the old ones because I don't need them. It's redundant. So yeah, this is Visual C++ 6.0. So the latest one that was supported by Windows NT 4.0 and alpha. And we're going to set an active configuration, which I did there, just to help uh, when we're going to compile. But we can now go back in here and check again. And we can select alpha processors here. We can compile for a specific, specific one, or we could just go blended, which is what I did. So I could compile uh, like per CPU, like optimized. It might not offer any benefits, but you never know. Now we're going to remove some things here. So we're going to remove this called we enabled direct music support because direct x under windows nt doesn't support that so the sound music doesn't work to midi and we're also gonna remove uh, some uh, x86 related stuff we did there too so now we're gonna compile here and it's gonna fail next here we're gonna build strgen files by selecting build on the project uh, we're gonna need that exe that it produces to actually build some other files. It's some something is up with the project that I can't figure out how to get it to find the files properly. But if I now copy SDRGN that I created by running that to the root of the source code, and uh, you can just run it from there and it should give no output. But uh, just to show it, I'm using command prompt here to run it from there. Uh, we should get no output. It will uh, generate some files, like I said, we need. Otherwise, you're gonna get compile errors missing those files. So it's like a part of the build script they intended. It just doesn't work for me for some reason. We can open a project here again. And now it should still fail if you select build here. Uh, build should fail like before. But if I now go to dependencies here and remove languages and now build, it should work. If I hadn't run the program before, it wouldn't have created necessary language files and it would error out again at the beginning. But right now it's compiling, so that's a good sign. We have some errors and that I know we're gonna get. So I've done this before with 020. And this is 030 code I'm trying to get to work. So here we have a lot of like problems we need to solve. And it says 26 errors, I think, at some point. So we can click on them and get to the like the code here. And this is uh, the Win32C file we're inside right now here. And I actually opened the one from 0 to 0 so I can compare what I did in that one. So that's the one to the left. I've written testing there. So basically copy pasting that code. Uh, and I think I took that code from the, the Linux.c because uh, I didn't know how to like properly replace the code and write it myself. So I figured out that. So now we're in a different part of the code, and this is uh, also a comment I before. This is basically registers on an x86 CPU, and uh, I think they used this maybe for the bug. I'm not sure. Like the, I removed the option before 
the beginning for it to actually use this code, but you still need to comment it out, it seems. And this is uh, it's basically how, how the game, I think, handles crashes and stuff, so maybe for debugging. But it's based on x86, and I would have to rewrite all those registers for alpha, and I don't know assembler for either CPU, so removing it is the easy option here. So that's what I'm doing. So we just can get past because we can't compile uh, like x86 rate and stuff in the, for an alpha CPU here. Here I'm commenting out some code and it's the equivalent of the code we pasted into this file at the top before. And here we're copying that code again uh, that came from the Linux version. And I'm putting it down here. I don't remember why I decided to put it down there, but I think it was with some troubleshooting so if it made any difference. I didn't have it like that in 020. And then I'm copying in this def uh, definitions here that did not exist in, in 020, but we have in 030 here. So just to make it work. Now we're building again here. So I got one error, one warning. And the error we're getting here is actually due to a missing file, it seems, from the source code. So network underscore GUI dot C. It does exist in the next version, uh, 0.3.1, so I did end up copying the file from there. With the file in place, we can now try and build it again, and it should compile just fine, and so it did. So we're basically ready to try the game now, and I had have run 0.2.0 before on the computer, before trying to compile 0.3.0 here. So we're copying the execute table that we generated into the game folder, I removed old execute table, and it doesn't work because sound problems apparently. So I decided to reboot, so this is very speed up version of booting an alpha uh, with alpha bias and on SMT. So I just want to see if it runs now because it clearly said it to zero ran before. And I'm gonna try now and we got an error message here which annoys me and also for the observing one the game does run but we don't have the actual proper background, uh, the demo running in the background, so that's, and that didn't happen with 0 0 when I had it, but the game does run, it had that CLib uh, I think it said uh, was missing, and you can actually compile it in, which I figure out later, but yeah, right now the game is running, so we can keep working on the problem, but I tried again and starting again, it doesn't work, and I figured out actually that uh, it's actually not quitting properly, it's actually running the background, so task manager will show up until it is still running, that's why it's it's hanging a sound card because it's essentially a sound block to 16, so you can only run one like sound at a time. And here is where I gave up on 030 because it wants clibstat.lib. And for me to compile that for the alpha, I need Visual Studio 7.0, which doesn't exist for the alpha for Windows NT. So that's when I decided to move on with 020 instead. To stop the game from hanging when quitting, we need to disable the actual sound part of the game that handles sound effects, not music, we've already done that. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, we removed the direct music before, so this is like the, the like I said, for the wave part. So no music effect. It might actually be fixable, but I, I really don't know anything about sound, sound and programming. So let's try it again here, and let's start up. We can quit it and see if we run it again. And it runs. It's also 2 kilobytes smaller than XE now. So this is actually the game now running. And uh, because I can't fix the sound, I actually <laughs> installed Winamp and just played the midis from the game there. You can see the mid. I think they're called .gm. But to play the actual game, I have made a patch. But to actually play the game, you need uh, the, the original assets for the graphics from the, the Windows version of uh, Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And I don't remember where I got the MIDI files from, but that's what I'm playing in uh, Winamp. And actually increases the immersion quite a lot, like it's almost there. Uh, obviously, it <laughs> would be better if we actually had uh, working sound in the game, but I'm very happy just to have another game on Alpha running. At this point I have like Doom 1 and 2, Quake 2, my own port of Action Quake 2, where I rewrote the Quake 2 source code to make a dedicated client for the mod. Also change the mod a little bit. Uh, that was actually planned to work on those instead when the hard drive decided to go on a fritz and the head has decided to be everywhere at once. But yes, this is uh, OpenTTD 0 to 0 then running on uh, the deck Alpha Windows NT. 
And uh, we, we can see the CPUs down to the right. It actually, some of this due to Winamp, obviously, and stuff like that. Uh, I tested on my 600 MHz EV 5060 with only open T3 at uh, I think 800 by 600, and it was like 34 percent CPUs. So there's definitely some room there for some more trains and for this to simulate and so on. Let's uh, watch the game and have some uh, MIDI music playing over it to see how that sounds, if you think it's immersive enough to pass. So yeah, that's the porting of uh, OpenT to D0 to 0 to the Deca Alpha S. And as you can see, I'm not a programmer. I really didn't write any code. I mostly set up the compiler. And then I commented out code that was, I that luckily were optional. That's not always the case, but luckily that uh, that uh, code for the, the x86 registers and stuff were optional. So removing that code and uh, disabling direct music and also removing the code, commanding out the code for, for the actual sound effects uh, fixed most of the issues with the game. Obviously a good developer or someone who actually knows how to port properly could uh, obviously fix the sound. But uh, the thing is uh, DirectX 3 in Entity 4, 4.0 doesn't support direct uh, music, it doesn't support direct 3D. Uh, unlike Windows 98, so you're very limited there. And obviously this wasn't intended to run on Windows NT 4.0 it seems, and obviously not alpha. So this is what I have done just to get the game in a basic working state, and I'm surprised how well it actually works. I'd hope for full screen, uh, but there's no option for that. And so one reason was I'm messing around with 030, because they mentioned full screen there, but uh, yeah, didn't find it when I got it running. Uh, but you can go full screen, like window, you can maximize the window, so you can go like 800, 600 desktop and then just maximize the window and get essentially full screen. I will be posting links to the game down below in the description of the video, so you can download it for the few people in the world that still runs a digital alpha with Windows NT 4.0. And if you're wondering why I'm running Windows, it's uh, basically because I can't get Linux stable on it anymore. It was stable when I got it in 2006, ran it for a few years with gentle Linux. Reinstalled in 2014 and uh, it always crashed to SMR under any kind of like harder load, like compiling, which it doesn't do under NT, but uh, under Linux. And I spent five years trying to fix it with the uh, Gento developer and so on, but uh, there is something weird with the system. It's uh, with SMR mode and uh, yeah, alpha bias works fine. So that's why I'm doing this. Do I take like one day to set up it from scratch? And I spent five years trying to get Linux stable. And I'm pretty sure there's something with the hardware because it, there's always something with this computer at this point. It's very worn out uh, in some ways. And it works now, but I had to fix a few things for this video. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're one of the few people who are actually looking for a game for your Alpha and Windows NT, I suppose this, this is another one. I haven't seen anyone port OpenT3 to it uh, for NT. Obviously under Linux there's not, not a really big issue running OpenT3 on it. So yeah, this, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time. Bye. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage, braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.